31, welcome to chapter 5, or specifically section 5.1, quadratic functions. So in chapter 4, we looked at linear functions, and we're going to progress from linear functions through all the different polynomials in chapter 5. So our next stop will be degree 2 polynomials, or we call those quadratic functions. So we've done the linears, right, degree 1. We're about to do quadratics, degree 2. And then we'll move into the cubics, the quartics, and then any degree higher, uh, four or higher. We'll do all the de different degreed functions as we move throughout this chapter. And we'll also take a look at rational functions. But this is just section 5.1, so we're going to stick with quadratic functions. So we're going to recognize characteristics of parabolas, and we're going to determine a quadratic function's minimum or maximum value. And we're going to do as much of this as we can without our calculator, and then I wanna show you how your calculator can assist you so that you can make sure you're getting your answers correct. So in example one, we're gonna determine the characteristics of the parabola shown in the figure below. I'm gonna scooch this up so that we can see everything, but that's what we're gonna be taking a look at in, in example one, a bunch of traits or characteristics of a parabola. So let me get this just about as far up as I can. That looks pretty good. Okay, so with that, let's see what we have here. The first thing I'm being asked to find is the vertex. And the vertex is a point, so you owe me an ordered pair. And the vertex is either the high point or the low point of the parabola, just depending on if the parabola opens up or down. This particular parabola opens up. You can see the left end is up and the right end is up as well. And here is the low point. So that would be my vertex, and if I count that out, that looks like it's the ordered pair three comma one. All right, now the y-intercept is where my graph crosses the y-axis. And if I look on the graph, it looks like the graph is crossing the y-axis at this ordered pair, which looks to be about zero seven. Now, when it comes to x-intercepts, when you have parabolas, there are three options. You will either have no x-intercepts, you may have one x-intercept, or you could possibly even have two x-intercepts. And if we take a look, oh, that is not how you spell intercepts. So these are your three options. You'll either write the word none, you'll give me one ordered pair, or you'll give me two ordered pairs. And x-intercepts are where your graph crosses the x-axis. And if I look here, my graph doesn't cross the x-axis. So the answer to this, this part of the question, or the answer to this characteristic, this trait, is there are none. All right. And we'll relate that back to how the discriminant of this parabola is negative, but we're not there yet. We'll get there on the next example. All right, so I would just say none. All right, my parabola doesn't cross, uh, excuse me, doesn't cross the x-axis. Now if it did, again you would owe me ordered pairs. So these first three traits here, or these first three characteristics, these are points on the graph, so you owe me ordered pairs. All right, so let's just make sure we distinguish that. Points on the graph, which means you should write them up as ordered pairs. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the direction of the opening. This is just either an up or a down, and you can see again, this parabola, it's heading up. The left and right end are both headed up. So I'm just gonna write the word up here. All right, in terms of the axis of symmetry, there is a line that will cut this graph in half. When I say cut it in half, I mean that each half will be the mirror image of the other half. All right, and you can see this, this line, it's going right through the vertex, which every ver uh, axis of symmetry does, it goes through the vertex. So if I was to draw this line in, I'm gonna dot it because it's not technically part of my graph, it's just the axis of symmetry. It's not the at part of the parabola. But let's get this drawn in. Now it is a vertical line, 
And the equations of vertical lines come in the form x is equal to some number. And we talked about this in section 4.1, but you can imagine any ordered pair on this line, right? 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, and then 3.5, or maybe 3 and 7.2, right? Any ordered pair on this graph has an x coordinate of 3, so the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals 3. All right, now where these three were ordered pairs, this is the equation of a vertical line. I'm only going to write the phrase equation of a line right here because there will be times we have parabolas that open left and right, and then they'll have horizontal lines for their axis of symmetry. All right, I'm, I'm running out of, um, I, I need to scooch this up, so we're, we're going to scooch this so we can just see the top of this parabola because it's hard for me to get all of this in one view screen. So there we go, I've got just the top of the parabola showing and you see my last two traits popping out, increasing and decreasing. And we talk about whether a function is increasing or decreasing, always in the context of moving left to right along the x-axis. So I'm always moving this way along the x-axis. And if we look at my function, all right, if I move left to right, you see my finger is moving left to right. I get that it's moving down and up, but I'm still moving left to right. And you can see my function decreases it hits that vertex, that minimum point, and then it increases. So I decreased from all the way left to this x-coordinate, and then from this x-coordinate to all the way right, I was increasing. And it's been a little bit since we've done intervals of increasing and decreasing, and these are intervals, meaning you're only going to give me the x-coordinates, and we're going to use interval notation. So again, I'm decreasing from all the way left to positive three, and then I'm increasing from positive three to all the way right. So let's take a look at this. My first interval, it's three, right? Because you see I start increasing. I start at three, and then go, I go all the way to the right, at least the x-coordinates, right? As I move from here to here on the x-axis, my finger heads up. So this is three to infinity, okay? And I'm gonna scooch this up just a bit so I can get that interval of decreasing in our view. So here I would be decreasing from all the way left to positive three, right? Each way I'm going low to high, right? Three is lower than infinity, negative infinity is lower than three, so low to high, low to high. But I'm increasing on the right half of the parabola, decreasing on the uh, left half of the parabola. And when you do intervals of increasing and decreasing, only write up the x-coordinates. Right? Only write up the x-coordinates, oops, and use interval notation. And when I say interval notation, right, we're always going low to high. Right? So this number is lower than this number. This number is lower than this number. All right, so this is great for example one, we were able to look at a graph and list out a bunch of traits. But what I wanna practice right now is, is taking a look at this graph. And can you get me the equation? Can you get me the formula that governs that graph? And then we'll combo that with all of the traits. All right, I'll see you in example two, bye.